In the previous video, we learned kind of the three foundational skills of free motion quilting. So I have taken those designs and kind of combined them and modified them to show you what those kind of three foundational designs can do to give you just a world of quilting designs. So I have my little stack here and on the top is the meander. And this is the one that we did in the previous video. So I've actually forgotten what order I have these in. So this is gonna be a bit of a surprise for me. Um, so this is Meander and I modified that by just uh, adding a little loop as I was meandering. So it's the same technique of filling a space evenly, but when I would get kind of to the peak of one of those kind of turnaround areas, I would just add a little circle and that makes this a very different looking design. This is really playful, it's a really fun, and adding that little turnaround, that little loop here, does kind of pause the design and allow you just a kind of a second to plan out where you're going a little bit easier. So if you are struggling with the meander and kind of planning out your route around a block or around an area of the quilt, then try adding a little design every once in a while into your meander. And as you're doing that design, it one, gives you a place to stop because right where your lines of quilting cross over each other is always a great place to stop because there's already thread build up there. So any variation in your stitch length or little bobble will be disguised and um, you'll still look like you had this amazing kind of fluid, amazing all over. So if you are struggling, then try something like this and that might help your meander skills improve a little bit. I've done this in two kind of separate scales so you can see how um, the overall meander is about the same size over here, but my loops are much bigger. And um, I really love this section with the big kind of circles. It will also help you kind of develop that kind of smooth circle motion as you're quilting. So um, this is a really fun design. Here's a, another variation on this. Instead of adding circles, I add a little hearts. And this, I think, looks a lot more complicated than it is. All I'm doing is kind of bringing my meander around and then doing kind of a little double hump to make the top of the heart and then circling back around and continuing my meander. You can add as many hearts or as few hearts as you would like. And you don't have to limit yourself to hearts here. You could do little stars or little squares or triangles or pull out a motif from the fabric that you're working on and um, just insert it into your meander. If you are so inclined, you could really add a big mix of different little designs to your meander and it would really customize it to the fabric and quilt that you are working on. This is a meander, but instead of smoothly turning corners, I would have every once in a while simply stop and reverse direction so that I have these kind of like little flame points. You can see I have these curved lines just like I did in the original meander, but every once in a while I would stop and reverse direction, stop, reverse direction. And I used the same skill that I learned in meander of evenly filling this space by traveling around and working all these little pointed flame shapes so that my whole area was covered uniformly. You don't have to work randomly though. In this one, I just went back and forth. I used that same kind of wobbly wavy line, but I just worked back and forth. Now I divided my work kind of into two columns here, but you could have these intersect a little bit. I actually just finished a portion of a quilt where I did something very similar to this. And um, I thought it was a really fun look and it was really fast and really easy to do. This adorable rosette design is a variation on a meander. I meandered into a circle and then when I reached the middle, when I couldn't continue to meander without making my thread lines really close together, I simply escaped from the flower and wiggled into the next rosette. And I did that all the way around this design. So you can see I started here. Here's one of my little thread tails. I wiggled in and then came out and wiggled in and came out 
And then I just did that randomly, filling the space. And I think this is adorable. I think this could go on a little girl's quilt or on something that had a lot of flowers or just like a really classical quilt. I think this is adorable. Now I'm starting to combine my meander with the other designs. Here's my meander with clusters of my messy pebbles that we went over in the last video. It's right here actually. So I would just meander for a little while and then I would go right into a little area of pebbles. And once I did anywhere from three to four of them, here's a little cluster of two. After I went through that last rotation, I simply went out and went back into a meander. You can combine any designs that you would like together into something like this. You simply start doing one and when you get tired of it, swap into the next one. If it would make it easier for you, you could go ahead and pre-plan this a little bit by marking with some water-soluble markers or a safety pin, however kind of works best for you, areas where you want these little clusters to show up, or you can just kind of do it by spacing. I did mine about a hand width apart, but any kind of technique that works for you will help you develop that kind of even spacing. Or maybe you don't want them even. Maybe you only want these in the border or in certain blocks. You make the rules, it's your cool top. Here's the messy pebbles that we did uh, on the last video. And I did modify these a little bit and came up with some more ideas. Here is the same concept, but instead of tracing over those lines, I kind of spiraled out and then I would go to the next pebble and spiral out and then the next pebble and spiral out. So it's kind of like the meander technique where I am kind of moving back and forth across the surface of my quilt mixed with this messy pebble. So I'm just spiraling out and then kind of making a nice gentle curve line to kind of ease me into the next circle. Here's a very different take on Messy Pebbles. I used my Hera marker, which is, let me grab it. I know I referred to this in the last video. Um, this is a Hera marker. It is just a piece of plastic and it has kind of a, I'm gonna call it a blade, even though it does not cut. Um, it's just kind of a sharp point and it's not sharp. I'm rubbing my finger on it. It's not gonna cut your fabric, but you can take a ruler and lay it on your fabric and then use this to just kind of make a mark. It's really easy to see in person. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but it will make a really defined and not permanent mark on your fabric so that you can use it as a quilting guide when you're working. And then as soon as you wash it or you can spray some water on your fabric, that line will disappear. It's almost like finger pressing a line, but um, you don't have to fold it. It kind of makes it for you. So these are just a couple of dollars, I think they're definitely under $10. I'll put a link to them below, but they're made by Clover and um, I've got a couple of them. They are super handy. If you've never used one before, I highly recommend it. But I used that hair marker to make a grid on my solid fabric here. Now you may have a pieced top that creates squares for you, in which case you wouldn't even need to mark it. But I just did my little messy pebble kind of extending so that the kind of tips of the circle were kind of kissing my lines. And it just made a really nice grid of kind of messy pebbles. And this is a really great texture. So I really like this design. I feel the need to make a like a charm square quilt just so I can use this. Once you are comfortable with kind of that circular motion and especially working out from the middle of a circle, then you are ready for swirls. I quilt swirls maybe more than anything else. They are really fast. They fill the space really nicely. And um, all these little kind of points to the hooks of the swirls really help you fill in all those little nooks and crannies in black. Quilting this is a lot like quilting this little spiral design, except instead of working outward, you're gonna work in first, and then you're gonna bounce back around and then go into the next, the next swirl. This is one I definitely encourage you to draw as much as you can. Just start doodling it kind of on little pads of paper or whatever, and um, once you kind of get it, it will become second nature. It's like riding a bike. And now we finally get into the loop family, which is one of my favorites. 
So this is the Easy Loops that we learned last time and uh, I still love it. One of my favorite designs. Here is that same design. I keep turning this. Um, here is that seam design, but again, I used my Hera marker. Actually, I might have used a pen, but I made some wavy lines across my quilt. And then I extended my easy loops to just fill the space between those lines. And then when the lines disappear, you get this really nice kind of serpentine feeling loops that... I think make a really nice texture. And they are just about as easy as the original design. Here's a design that I feel is like super classy. I love this one. If we compare it to our original design, it is just a row of the same loop, except I have alternated the size of the loop. So a big one, like a lowercase l, and then a lowercase e. And I just alternated that all the way across. And then in the next row, I just did it the other way. So instead of going up into an L, I kind of mirrored it and went down. And I used this row as a reference so that these kind of paired up. And I think it makes just this really elegant kind of, um, kind of design that would look great in a border. Um, if you had just this much, this would be a really lovely border or a sashing. Um, you could pair it this way so that they are radiating out from the center, or you could pair it this way so they are pointing towards each other. Either way, I think would look fantastic. Here's another variation on our easy loops, and it's kind of similar to this one where you are working down below the line in addition to above the line, but here we're doing it at the same time. So you come up for your L, and then you immediately dip below the line to do the reverse. Now, this is a very simple figure eight design, and I've made it look even more complex here because I have snuck the next row kind of in between the loops of the previous one. And then when I did this next row, I snuck them in between again. It's a really effective way to make this design feel a lot fancier than it is. And to do this, I just used my hair marker and I drew some straight lines across and aimed to have kind of the midpoint of my design, kind of right here on that line. And that's it, just up and down below a line. And I filled up the space and I think it looks great. Once you have that simple figure eight down, then you can come up with a ton of different variations. Here it is very simply. Here it is much taller. And this is the same design as this, except I did two passes. So on my first pass, I did every other kind of loop. And then when I went back, I filled in between. And that makes this really nice diamond design. I think it's very fancy and it looks great in sashing. Here's a figure eight that has been combined with our messy pebbles. Instead of just doing a simple kind of turnaround, I went around it a few times and then went on to the next one. It's really kind of unexpectedly playful. I like that one a lot. Our last sample is very close to this first purple one that I showed you. I used a pen or a hair marker to just draw some wavy lines across my quilt, and instead of filling it with these easy loops, I filled it with this figure eight. This figure eight design is one that you will see a lot in uh, quilting books because it is so flexible and it's also really fast to quilt. And it doesn't require a lot of movement of your quilt. You're just kind of going back and forth. It's kind of easy to manage. You can move your hands along. And it's just a really effective filler design. So those are, I think, 16 different designs that are just variations on the three that we learned in the first video. So you already have the skills to quilt all of these designs and many more. Just the pebbles, you could work down to single pebbles, you could align your pebbles in a line, you could start putting things inside your pebbles, um, a little star or an additional circle, um, anything that you can dream up, you can quilt. So once you're comfortable with the kind of basics of free motion quilting, it is time to start expanding our horizons and learning some new designs. But where to get those designs and how to start? 
I have a few books here from my collection that are some of my favorites that I do flip through from time to time to get ideas. This is a compilation book of all over patterns and it's just a simple layout of uh, a design on each page. There are no instructions, so you do have to kind of understand the basics of how free motion quilting works. And if you're trying to learn from a book like this, you just need to pick a place and start following the design with your finger and see if you can figure out the path that you need to quilt to do this. You could put a piece of tracing paper over it and actually draw on it if necessary. You could also open it up so it's just one piece on a light box like I have here and put a piece of paper over it and trace to kind of get that motion down. But what this book lacks in instructions, it really makes up in, in variety. You have a lot of designers who have contributed to this book and so there's an all over pattern for almost any style. If you're looking for something with more directions in it, then I like this free motion quilting with Angela Walters. She starts with the basics, basic swirls, and then kind of expands those um, motions and designs into something that is a little bit more um, modern or advanced. She goes over pebbles and then starts combining some designs. And I like this book because it does show some examples of finished quilts with the free motion quilting designs on them, which it's, it's always nice to see kind of a finished product. If you are interested in putting free motion quilting into blocks and you want them to uh, be a little bit more custom for that block, then these two books might be right up your alley. The first is free motion quilting idea book, and this is kind of a mix and match book. You can kind of select a block. So this is the courthouse steps design and it will give you a few ways to quilt that kind of a step by step. So there are multiple pictures and each picture progresses with a new element of the design. So it's very easy to follow the instructions and there's a pretty good variety of blocks available in this book from simple nine patches to in the kind of the back of the book, you have a little bit more uh, complex wedding ring designs and some kind of more modern stacked coins. I also like that it's spiral bound so it lays nice and flat. In a similar vein, there is Shape by Shape Free Motion Quilting with Angela Walters. And instead of specific blocks, she does shapes. So you will have triangles with a variety of different quilting options. And then there are, there's a whole chapter on circles, diamonds, so that you can take your block that is in your quilt and break it down into shapes and have quilting options for each of those shapes. And there are really good instructions for each of the designs. So you won't be trying to figure it out on your own like in the first book. The pictures are great. She uses nice contrasting thread for the kind of how-to portions. And um, it has some really fun designs. If you want to move beyond quilting books for inspiration, one of my favorite is these Zen Doodle books. And not every Zen Doodle design is going to be quilting friendly, um, especially these ones that have like really filled in areas. I guess you could go back and do like micro stippling to kind of get that shaded effect. But just the first few steps of this, a wavy line back and forth, and then they went in and filled it in with pebbles. And this right here would be a great quilting design. So I like to use this as inspiration. It's not always perfect. It doesn't always apply directly to a quilt block, but I do get a lot of ideas of the shapes and kind of repetitive patterns that um, are in this book. And I do have several of them that I kind of go to. Like that's a cute little clamshell kind of design. You could do that in probably one pass with like a little feather shape along the little line and that would be adorable. Like that's adorable. I bet you could figure out how to do that kind of in a more an easier quilting path than all these little lines. Finally, I encourage you guys all to get a notebook to keep all of your designs in one place. If you are doodling and coming up with your own designs, then you want to be able to remember what those designs are. You can get, obviously, just a paper notebook. I do almost all of my drawing on a iPad here. And this is my folder of just all of my all over designs. So when I have a few minutes and I'm bored, I will just 
doodle a little bit and kind of see what happens. This is a little wavy line thing that I drew and um, I actually did end up, I think, putting this on a quilt. I liked it so much. So I have all of my designs in one place. I also have like a whole um, folder for uh, border designs that I thought of. So when I'm feeling inspiration, I have one place to draw that idea out and then I have it to refer to in the future. In addition to the books I've shown you, there are also a ton of resources online for learning new free motion quilting designs. You can look at pantograph websites, even if your machine isn't set up for pantographs or you don't have a long arm at all, um, they're all made for quilting. They're all single line quilting designs. So if you go to a website and sort by easy, or if they have like an easy category, that's going to be kind of the best place to start. And it will just give you some shapes and ideas of a repeating shape that can be quilted. There are also a ton of people who share their free motion quilting on Instagram. You can search uh, the hashtag free motion quilting and uh, get a ton of ideas that way. You can also follow professional long arm quilters on Instagram. They often share their completed custom quilting designs on their Instagram feed. And it's a great place just to um, find out about new ideas or um, explore some new shapes. There are also online classes that you can take and also other YouTubers who do free motion quilting designs for free uh, videos available to you. I know I have a few on my channel and I have plans for many more. So from here on out, you can learn any design that is out there. You have all the tools that are necessary. You might want to doodle it a few times or spend some time changing it up and making it yours. You don't have to be limited to what is in these books or what you have learned from other teachers, including me. It is your quilt and your quilting, and I encourage you to have fun with it. Play, make these designs your own. I do have a few other quilting topics I would like to go over with you guys. Um, I have some ruler work kind of tips I'd like to share, as well as maybe some feathers if you guys are interested. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about feathers, then definitely leave a comment below, and I will include that in the final installment of the quilting series, which um, will not be next week. I think I have a few videos coming first, but um, it'll be soon. I'll be back soon with more quilting, but in the meantime, there are videos popping up on the screen if you'd like to watch something else. And I will see you guys soon. Happy quilting.